In the previous hundred days that we spent in the Industrial Revolution, we constructed the massive bucket wheel excavator to effortlessly extract ore from underground, but this came at a really high price in the form of a huge toxic pollution cloud constantly hanging over our heads poisoning us. And to make matters worse, we didn't even have the power generation necessary to constantly run the excavator even with all that pollution. My goal for the Thunder Days is to enormously upgrade our power generation and to use our newfound power to get all the materials necessary to begin constructing a city, all while attempting to keep pollution levels to something inhabitable where I can survive and not instantly die. Can I continue to grow our infrastructure without destroying the environment? That's what we'll find out in this hundred days. Everything in this video was done completely legit, and you can see the F3 screen day counter at multiple points throughout the video. If you guys enjoyed this video and want me to continue in this world, then be sure to hit the like button. 20,000 likes and I'll continue on. Check the timestamp in the description for an important announcement at the end of the video. Also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I'm trying to get to 150,000 subscribers by June, and I need your help. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter and join the Discord server. Links to both in the description. Hope you enjoy the video. You know, I log back into the world after being gone for a while, and I immediately die of pollution. Literally, like, don't even get to do anything, I just start dying. So, I spend the rest of day 100 researching ways to not die to the pollution like filtering it out and again a respirator and lo and behold another tornado shows up we literally just had a tornado like three days ago and we already have an f4 tornado coming from the same direction and we haven't even been on the world for like five minutes yet at the very least i was able to get my horse to safety this time before the tornado showed up which is not something i've been very good at before and i just spend the rest of that evening and part of the next morning watching the tornado from under the safety of my rock overhang. And I passed the time by crafting some gold horse armor, although I eventually realized later that I already had some and I didn't need to craft any. And I'm greeted with a nice surprise in the form of some acid rain when I leave the safety of my rock overhang. I need some leather to make my respirator, and I don't have very much, and I don't really feel like slaughtering the local cows, so I end up making an industrial squeezer instead, which I can use to compress rotten flesh into leather, at the cost of a little bit of power so i'm able to do that and it gives me blood as a byproduct i don't know what i'll ever do with that I'd probably just stick it in a wooden barrel somewhere but i'm able to make the diamond respirator which basically allows me to go under the pollution cloud for a limited amount of time until the respirator's filters get filled up and i don't really know if there's a way to clean them out i never really found a way but it did allow me to gather a bunch of leaves which i'd need for my pollution filtering the next day the next morning I spent a few more of my limited diamonds that I got from the previous 100 days to make two diamond filters and I also craft a pollutant pump, both of which I'll be using to filter out the pollution from the sky. And I'm able to survive underneath the cloud until my respirator fills up, so I don't have very long to set up my filtering system. And the funny thing is, is that the actual pipe that takes the pollution out is way taller than the smokestack, so it kind of looks like the filtering pipe is producing pollution, but it's actually the other way around. And I fill the MLG because the screen is really dark as the pollution, and yeah. And I hook up the pollutant pump to the power grid and realize that my respirator is 100% full on carbon and I literally can't use it anymore. However, I am able to make another one and I go back underneath the cloud of pollution one last time so that I can put in the leaves into the filters because the leaves will filter out the carbon and produce coal dust as a byproduct which I set up an automated extracting system for. And on day one of three, I'm able to watch the pollution cloud disappear right before my eyes, although not very quickly. The next morning, I finish digging out the area for a path that will kind of go around the river near my old base. And it basically will be coated in brick eventually, although I'm not sure when because I don't have a lot of brick right now. And then another tornado shows up. This is about the third tornado we've had in around 10 days. Unfortunately, I forget to get my horse to safety, but luckily for me, it lands on top of a tree and I'm able to rescue without it getting killed. And by that evening, the pollution had disappeared even more. And by the next morning, the pollution cloud had gone down enough that I could go underneath it without a respirator this time and only get minimal effects. And then I start switching out my garden cloche so that it would grow cactus instead of the industrial home because I need a lot of green dye in the near future for a project that I have in mind. I also checked my nutrition. We're doing okay for now, but I still don't have the full additional 10 hearts. And I had to turn on my diesel generator for a bit and start replenishing the pollution cloud before it was even gone. Because I'd need to run my core sample drill a bunch, which is what I did for the remainder of that day and day 106. Because I was looking for a very specific type of vein underground. I did find a gold vein and a few other things like a galenia vein or galena. I might be mispronouncing that. But what I was looking for was a silt vein because if you park your excavator over a silt vein, you can get sand, clay, and gravel 
just automatically with that. And I'd need all of those resources in the coming days. It was also becoming incredibly tiring having to run all the way across my entire field just to get milk for my one cow. So I decided to bring my cow back to my area and I made a little leashing area for my horse and my cow so that I could keep them near my stuff and they wouldn't be able to run off and get picked up by tornadoes as easily. I spent the next several days exploring for sand, clay, and limestone, which I would mine manually until I could set up my excavator and run it properly. So I went to the desert, I mined a bunch of sand, and I got a bunch of sandstone to go with that as well because I can put the sandstone in my crusher and it will actually give me two sand per sandstone. So it was more efficient to mine the sandstone as opposed to just normal sand. I also found a diamond on the ground that I'm assuming dropped from a tumbleweed when it hit a cactus and broke because they have really random loot tables. And then I went and mined a bunch of clay underground and I kept mining little bits of chisel limestone but you could only find it in really small quantities and that wasn't going to do it so I'd have to find a bigger deposit of it if I really wanted to get as much as I needed. also found this little weird mossy cobblestone overgrown cave biome underground and it led me to a giant dungeon area like a really big version of what we found in the first 100 days and I got some decent loot from it but I also had to fight off a horde of zombies because there are a lot of zombie spawners there. I suppose if I ever needed experience I could just come back to one of these places and make like a super overpowered zombie farm. But I also found a normal dungeon, but it, there wasn't really like anything super good in it. The next day on day 111, I went back to my base with my massive haul of stuff from underground and mining sand and everything. And it took me a long time to unload all of it. But I also went to put all of my sandstone and stuff into the crusher. I noticed along the way that the pollution was getting better. The pollution cloud just started to go down, which was good because those respirator things cost a full diamond each, and I don't have a ton of diamonds to just devote to respirators. But I still needed limestone as a primary building block in my first build, which would actually kind of be my house slash living area. So I went looking underground with no success in finding a large limestone deposit. So that evening, I went back and I made a ton of Yorkshire pudding because I was getting low on it. Even afterward into the night, I kept exploring, looking for caves that I'd already been to because I'd remembered seeing some somewhere in a cave and I just didn't remember where. And then I finally found it, although winter had kind of come by that point, or at least it was starting to freeze at night, and I got hypothermia. Speaking of hypothermia, I saw a lot of comments on my other videos saying that I said hypothermia when I was overheating. I actually said hyperthermia because that's the overheating equivalent of hypothermia. I just thought I'd clarify that. At the very least, I was able to get a ton of limestone from that deposit, and I'd be set for the rest of my time. And then a tornado spawned, and it kind of chased me home. I, I did not want to get caught in that out in the open, and it eventually made its way back to my base, but I was able to return safely before it could harm me or my horse. It was also a really weak tornado as well, and it actually turned into like a thunderstorm or something else right before my eyes on the weather table. So it ended up not causing any problems, but it did scare me a little bit when I first saw it. That evening, I went out to gather beetroots, of all things, from one of the nearby villages. And you might be wondering why I need beetroots, and it's actually for the same reason that I need uh, cactus for green dye, because I need them for red dye. I actually am trying to acquire green, red, and blue dye for a certain project. So, so I made my current garden cloche start making beetroots, because I had plenty of cactus. And on day 114, I began making crafting clay, starting with blue and I'd be making the other colors later on. But the cool thing was, my pollution cloud was almost gone except for the sulfur, and the sulfur's not really hurting anything right now, so I decided to leave it. Then I made some green crafting clay and the red crafting clay, so I was able to make a deco bench, which is a gateway to many, many, many decorative items, literally hundreds of fully modeled, realistic-looking things, which is really nice from, like, uh, food props to windows that are their own blocks that look amazing and so I started testing it out you basically just put in your clay and you can take out whatever item you want it'll just cost a different amount of clay so I started with a uh, a window just to see what it would look like and the window actually looked as insane that's the level of detail that everything in there has I also took out a, a, a tiny R2D2 because it was kind of cute and I'd, I'd stick that on my like furnace a little bit later and then after that, I started gathering my materials. I got my different limestone blocks and a few other types of bricks. And I even stuck a nice sign from the deco bench, like an anvil sign, outside my factory building because I thought it looked cool. The morning of day 15 saw the beginning of my first large building project 
here, larger than my original factory building and more detailed in many ways, and to extend for quite a few days, so I think the best way to do it justice is in the form of a montage. Well, the house isn't anywhere near finished yet, but we did get a bunch of the exterior done and it's looking really nice. And also during the time of building, I did get a bunch of plant oil from my industrial hemp seeds with my squeezer, which I'll be needing later. And I also traveled about 500 blocks just to get spruce wood because I need it for the floor and the doors as you saw in the montage. I also finally got around to uh, making wool armor, which will keep me warm during the winter because you probably saw I was freezing to death a few times there, which was not very epic. So. Made a full suit of that, although it, it looks kind of funny and I don't get much armor from it. And I was able to make a giant tree as well, which I could chop down and get a ton of logs from. And when I chopped it down, my axe was left on exactly zero durability, which I thought was interesting. On day 121, I realized that you can use your saw, which I'd just been using as a crafting item before to turn logs into planks and stuff. I realized that you can use it to actually break blocks that are wood related just as easily as you can with an axe. So. I spent the rest of the day making my two wooden floors out of these cool smooth spruce planks, which look really nice. They're a little bit cleaner looking than the normal spruce planks from Vanilla. And by the next day, I was all set to make the walls as the second floor because I'd actually have something to stand on this time. I also made these really, really cool lanterns, which look really nice, and decided that I'd be using them for a lot of light sources in all my builds later on. I also semi-automated the production of steel with a hopper on top and like actual chest output for steel so I could get steel a bit faster. And the only nutrition that I was missing at this point was fruit, so I decided to get a bunch of berries. I just spent the rest of the day building the walls on the second story of my house using limestone, and it looked really, really nice when I started to add the lanterns and the special windows from DecoCraft. I don't know what the deal is with enchantments in this version, but I've been getting really bad level 30 enchants. Like, I literally just got smelting, which is really bad if you think about it, because I need, to, like, the ore to actually double it in the crusher, and smelting will give me the ingots of ores that I mine. It's good for a couple things, because it does silk touch related stuff. But mostly it's bad, and I immediately tried to figure out how to unenchant it. But unfortunately, there's not a way to do that in this mod pack. But I did set about mining a bunch of slate during the rest of the day so that I could use it for the roof of my house. The next morning, I got back from mining my slate, and I turned it into the slate roof tile thingy, which looks super nice. And I also checked the pollution filters, and they're doing pretty well. They're getting a little bit low on leaves, but I don't need to refill them quite yet. 
and they're doing their job of keeping the pollution at bay as I periodically turned on my diesel generator to charge my capacitor banks. I started experimenting with roof designs and it took me a while to get something that I liked, but eventually I settled on a combination of limestone ridges and slate roof in between that. And I also added some windows that kind of come out of the roof and I think that added the finishing touch that I needed. The following morning I finished off the roof that I'd started the previous night and I was able to do all the back of it and it nothing really was different. This time I added some bump out windows, dyed a little bit of hypothermia, you know, just the usual things, the modded Minecraft things. No need to be too concerned about it, although I should probably find some way to not immediately freeze to death, especially during the day. That would be very beneficial. But the windows started looking really epic once I added the special window blocks like that actually look like real windows from DecoCraft. And that's what completed the roof for me. Well, I had a roof over my head now and I've got some walls. The heating is a little bit debatable, but we'll get there eventually. So it was time to move into my house, which meant moving my items, which if you know much about moving items in Minecraft, then you can imagine how long and annoying it was, especially because I had to use trap chests to make a full wall of chests because this is too early of a version of Minecraft. They just place double chests next to each other, or chests in general next to each other. That would be too convenient. No, 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 we can't do that. So I spent the rest of that night and all of the next day moving items from my original starting area underneath that cliff thing by the river into my new house in my new storage system, which is much closer to my factory building. And you also may have noticed that I left one wall completely open. And that's because I'm going to be making my second factory building right next to my house so that I don't even have to go outside to get to it. It's going to also house my new power generation, which we'll get to soon. And they're both going to just seamlessly connect the two buildings, will just form one wall on the street, and it will look very epic. On day 127, I did something that I meant to do during the first 100 days, and I ran out of time to do, which is make a multi-block kitchen, because there's a ton of food items in this uh, mod pack, and it's hard to keep track of all of them, it's hard to know what you can make with all of them, because there's so many different food items from Pam's Harvest Craft. But there's one solution to that, and that solution is called cooking for blockheads, which adds a multi-block kitchen where you can basically just make a bunch of different like kitchen storage items, and uh, like a sink, a fridge, other stuff like that. And you can put all your items in it and it'll show you everything that you can make with the items that you have stored in there at any given time. It constantly updates and it allows you to see everything in one spot. The amount of items that you can store in it just depends on how much storage you make. And you can also make tool racks and other places to store your utensils for cooking stuff. And it's overall a really nice mod. One of the great things is that it showed me a couple new food items that I didn't even know I could make. Some of which are actually really good, like stuffed duck, because stuffed duck doesn't actually take that much to make. And it restores four nutrients at once from one food, which is really good. The only thing it doesn't restore is dairy, and it's not too difficult to just like go out and drink milk buckets, for example. <laughs> My mission for day 128 was to decorate the bottom of my house, which is actually going to be a little pub area with like chairs and tables and a fireplace and stuff. So I started making the walls and some beams on the ceiling using spruce wood and I had to go all the way to the nether just to get one more piece of nether rack because I needed two when I had one. It was kind of lame. But when I actually got the fireplace working, I didn't light anything on fire and it looked pretty nice. Although I ran into problems in the nether with my darn smelting pickaxe because it gave me nether bricks instead of netherrack. That's one of the downsides of that enchantment. For my chairs and tables, I went back to the DecoCraft mod that night and I took out a few chairs and tables from my deco bench and I found some that look really nice. You can also sit in the chairs as well, which is a nice functional feature and you could see like the moonlight coming through the window it looked very epic. And I also checked the deco bench. There is actually a chandelier. And I was afraid it was going to be really big because it wouldn't let me place it down at first. But when I actually went back to my pub area and I tried to place it on the ceiling, it turned out to be a very reasonable size and it looks extremely nice. So I'm happy with it. The next morning I finished decorating the area around the kitchen and the bar. And it looked pretty cool, although I was still missing a few lanterns. It was a bit dim in there. And we don't really have any trouble with mob spawning because the powered lanterns outside prevent mob spawning. But it still needs to be a little bit lighter. So I solved the problem by sticking a few lanterns above the bar. And that evening I went to my chicken farm and discovered that I somehow caught a sheep in it. Or at least I think that's a sheep, I'm not really sure. But it's not a chicken and it doesn't really do anything. So I'm just going to leave there for now. 
I had my heart set on making stuff duck. So I started taking steps toward being able to automate at least part of what I needed to make that. And my first step was to upgrade the storage area around my garden cloche so that I could store large amounts of a couple items using storage drawers. And stuff duck, it restores four nutrients out of five per thing that you eat. But there are foods that restore all five at once, but those are a little bit beyond me for now and I'll have to wait on that. So I started to break some frost gardens instead so I could get berries so I can make a bunch of fruit bait to put in my ground trap. Because that's the only way I can get the duck right now. I kind of just catch uh, just pieces of duck. They just kind of show up in the ground trap, but don't question it, it's fine. I also made a very, very important discovery that you can grow almost any type of seed in a garden cloche. I thought you could just grow vanilla and like hemp seeds in there, but you can grow corn and even other stuff which I discover later on. So that would make mass producing the stuff duck much easier. The next morning I took my newfound knowledge of garden cloches and I made two more of them so I could grow even more crops like uh, onions and garlic and things I needed for my stuffed duck. And I also set up a bunch of uh, little heater things so that I wouldn't freeze to death in my factory building because I got really tired of that. Luckily connecting two more garden cloches and running them constantly wasn't draining the power from my capacitor that was like uh, supplying the entire building so that was good and I set up a little automated thing for the ground trap because it actually interacts with hoppers which is really convenient so I can just put a ton of the bait in it and then I can just have to have the output go to a chest and it actually did work on the next morning I got a bone and I also began planting an apple orchard because you can't really shove saplings in the garden cloche, which makes sense, but it's unfortunate. And that afternoon, I moved on to make the outline for my factory building, which has a couple of unique properties. Because one, it's going to have a stable underneath part of it where I could put my horse and my cow right next to my house so that they're safe from tornadoes and other things. And it's also going to have the excavator incorporated into one of the walls because I'm not moving it. It needs to sit over the iron vein. And that's the best place for it. So I think it'll look pretty cool later on. Actually, I know it will look cool because I already know what happens. And I had to make sure that the factory building was big enough to accommodate a massive steam turbine because that is our chosen method of power production that is way better than the diesel generator. And it's actually completely clean, at least if you run it a certain way, which I'll explain later. And I also decided to make a really big smokestack, so I had to lay out a foundation for that. It's completely unnecessary, but it's going to look very cool. And you're probably wondering why I need a giant smokestack for a clean steam turbine. And that's not important right now, we'll deal with that later. But what is important now is the arrival of spring, and my need for andesite and concrete for the floors. So I went and gathered a bunch of andesite for walls, and I made a bunch of concrete, because I had a lot of slag that had been accumulating over time for my blast furnace. And by the end of that day, I was able to fully coat the floor in concrete as I did in my first factory building, and it was looking pretty good. I turned on my excavator until I drained a high voltage capacitor the next morning just for fun, and then I had to go out and look for some rice in a swamp, but first I made this like really cool food, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm not going to try, but I eventually found some rice from uh, Soggy Gardens, I think that's what they're called. I even found this weird burb peacock thingy on my way back, and when I got back I was able to swap out my strawberries for rice to grow in the garden cloche, because rice is one of the things I need for my stuffed duck. And that evening I set about gathering the materials for the first machine that I would need in order to start my steam production, the distiller, which turns normal water into distilled water, which turns into steam more easily. And on the morning of day 135, I made said distiller and was able to turn it on, although I kind of got uh, ambushed by a tornado, which was unexpected. It was a really weak tornado and it turned into a thunderstorm pretty quickly, so it wasn't a big deal. And I was able to make my distiller without getting yeeted into the sky. And then I made two fluid pumps so that I could pump water from an infinite water source into the distiller using fluid pipes and a little bit of power. And when I turned it on, you could watch the water slowly fill up the internal tank of the distiller. And then when I gave the distiller power, you could see it turn the water into distilled water. I then went and cleared out a space in the field next to my factory building because I need a largish area to place a solar tower which will basically use the power of the sun to turn the distilled water, or just normal water, into steam for me, although that only runs during the day. I also started growing garlic instead of one of my other crops, and that was one of the last things I would need for my stuffed duck. And I also got a ton of milk from my milking cow. And at the end of the day, I realized that I finally filled up all of my nutrition and I gained all extra 10 hearts, which is a very nice sight, although I still had to worry about maintaining all extra 10 hearts. 
The solar tower takes a lot of steel to make, but I didn't have any shortages on that because I'd been making steel the entire time so far because I knew I need a lot of it in the future. So it wasn't any problem getting all the resources to build it, and I left enough room around it so that I could make four solar reflector things, which are basically just big mirrors that actually make the solar tower work because by itself, it can't turn any water into steam because it doesn't like reflect its own light. I would leave that till the next day and I instead started laying the pipe from my distiller to the solar tower's input so I could get my distilled water to that through a pipeline. And once it was hooked up I was able to watch the distilled water input rapidly into the solar tower. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that my apple trees grew on their own and I was able to get my first harvest of apples meaning I could finally make some stuffed duck. Next day I made my four solar reflectors, which are not too bad although they each require a block of silver, although I have plenty of silver so it wasn't any big deal. I then laid a pipe from the output of the solar tower to a big fluid tank that would be inside the factory building to store steam overnight, because my idea was that if I could make enough steam during the day, then I could store it and I would have enough to run the turbine overnight without having to make a boiler, which uses diesel to turn water into steam, which does a lot of polluting as you could imagine. The next morning I checked my steam tank and steam was getting inputted just as I hoped once the sun rose, and you could look inside the solar tower and see the water getting turned into steam right before your eyes. And then I got hit by a tornado, which I was not expecting, and it was going straight for my chickens, which did not have a roof. And I was getting pulled by the tornado, but I barely managed to slap a roof onto the chicken pen so that they wouldn't get destroyed by the tornado. And then I was forced to sit there and wait for the tornado to go away, but then when it passed over me, I got picked up it instead of the chickens. I didn't take any fall damage there, but I also lost my water because it did the glitchy thing with the water bucket, so I would have to land in already existing water to not die. That was only mildly terrifying, but eventually it passed by, and I started getting resources for my steam turbine, which is very, very expensive. It takes 24 heavy engineering blocks, among other things, and I didn't have enough iron. I thought I did, but I was forced to mine yet more iron the next day, which is what I did for most of day 140, until the very end of the day when I got back and was able to put my iron into the crusher which would be the last time I would have to go mining for iron in this series. The next day I used all the iron that I gathered the previous afternoon to start making the last little bit of my steam turbine, but I also had to make an alternator, which is a second multi-block machine which you connect to the steam turbine, and that's what converts the kinetic energy into uh, actual power, which I can use. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of steel, so I had to AFK for a bit to get all my steel, and during that time summer arrived, I had to get a cooling coil so I wouldn't overheat in my factory building, and then I started using all my steel to make high voltage voltage coil blocks, generator blocks, other stuff like that, just lots of micro crafting. And that evening, I started building the steam turbine part of the generator so that I could have something to do while I waited for my steel to keep smelting. Day 143 saw the completion of the massive steam turbine, and a little bit later on the alternator, although it took me a little while to figure out where I had to right click with the engineer's hammer. But eventually I got it, and it was quite big, but by that point I had enough steel so I could make my generator blocks, meaning that I could build the alternator, although I built it the wrong way around the first time, so I had to tear it down and reverse its direction so that it would properly connect to the steam turbine. But once I got it, it looked very epic, and it was ready to connect with my pipeline to the steam output, and it slowly started spinning, and it made a really nice sound. And when I went to check the alternator, it already had over a million RF in it, because that's a huge internal bank, so we were going to get all the power we could ever need. In fact, we get about 12,000 RF per tick. For context, one excavator takes about 4,000 RF per tick, so we could technically power three simultaneously if we wanted to. Well, I had a massive abundance of power now, but I had to find a way to distribute it, which would first require some high voltage power lines. And I made the connectors and the wires okay, but the relays required insulating glass, which was a little bit annoying. I had to take some of my iron ingots 
and turn them into pulverized iron to make it. And I also set up like a little rafter thing above my factory building so I could put the high voltage power lines up there because if you touch them, they do a huge amount of damage. You do not want to touch them. They need to be far away from players. And I started by hooking up all six outputs to one set of high voltage lines, but I'd eventually change that around. And I also got attacked by this really nasty baby zombie that had an enchanted iron sword and it had knockback, at least knockback one, maybe even knockback two, but I decided to take one output of the alternator and connect it to my low voltage power grid system, which powered lamps and other stuff. So I figured it would have more than enough power than it needed at that point. And when I connected the excavator to the remaining high voltage lines, it ran continuously and smoothly because it had more power than it needed. The next morning I checked my distiller and it wasn't getting a lot of power which was concerning, but at the very least our steam production was pretty good, we were increasing steam slowly. The solution that I chose to the lack of power in the distiller was to swap out that low voltage output that I set up last night with a medium voltage. And I ended up making my first double power line with two different power grids on it. I kept them separate. I kept a medium voltage power line separate for larger machines. And I kept the low voltage line separate for lights and pumps. That was pretty much all I used for at the moment. And when I connected the distiller to the medium voltage power grid, it got plenty of power and it was producing distilled water at an excellent speed. The next day I still had more work to do. I started by putting an output chest for the excavator so that the items didn't just get dumped on the ground because I could run it constantly now which was amazing. I wouldn't have to go mining for iron anymore. And there was still work to be done on my power grid. I had to reconnect my first factory building to the power grid and instead of reconfiguring everything to run off medium voltage on the inside, I ended up making a transformer so I could take the medium voltage power line and use it to power the factory building but I wouldn't have to switch everything off of low voltage inside of that. And by that evening, I got everything connected up, and after a few forgotten uh, power lines I had to place in, we were getting power once again inside my factory building. I spent the next three days just doing some odd jobs and kind of just admiring the machines for a bit of that time, like the excavator, which was incredibly satisfying to watch. And we started to get a lot of iron. I also am getting sulfur from this vein, but I don't really have a use for sulfur. I'm kind of just storing it at the moment. I believe you can use it along with other stuff to make gunpowder, but that's not something I'm really interested in right now. But one productive thing I did do during those days was I set up another solar tower so that I could double my steam production during the day. Because with only one solar tower active during the day, I wasn't able to fully fill up my tank of steam by the evening and I would just quickly run out. So I was hoping that by making a second one, I would be able to have a full tank of steam by the evening and I could run it overnight because I can't really make any power if I don't have steam. And there's no clean way to produce power at nighttime. And with that knowledge, there came an unfortunate realization on day 50. While I was getting steam really fast and I would get a full tank of steam by the evening, it would drain incredibly quickly as we'll see by the end of this day but until then I was able to charge up my capacitors to full capacity <laughs> really quickly from the alternator because I got rid of another high voltage power line slot so I could just stick my capacitor banks there and I also started working on the walls of the factory building following a similar pattern that I used in the first hundred days. Yeah and by that evening I was left with a full buffer of steam in one of the solar towers and a full tank but the second that the sun went down it began draining at almost a bucket per second which was not going to last very long. It certainly wouldn't last the full 10 minutes. And so the only thing that I'd be able to do to power my steam turbine during the night would be to make a boiler, which is not a clean solution. The boiler in of itself isn't very expensive to make, especially now with my unlimited supplies of iron. But it runs off of diesel, as did the diesel generator, and we all saw what that did to the environment. But there's one somewhat good thing about this, because I still have my steam tank by the end of the day and that gets me through about half the night so I only need to active for half of every night and there's actually a way that I can use a redstone control to make it turn on once a uh, comparator detects that the tank is empty so that it doesn't turn on any earlier than it needs to so it can produce pollution for the least amount of time at least that was my hope and by the end of the day I'd assembled my boiler actually in the outline for my smokestack that's why i built that because i thought i might be needing the boiler but i wasn't sure yet and i figured it'd be a good vent for the pollution 
Conveniently for me, I can use redstone wires to transmit redstone signals, but it took me a little bit of time to figure out how to use it. I started by putting one on the back of the comparator, and I had to make like a line of it that would go over to the boiler because all multi-block machines from Immersive Engineering and its submods have redstone control, and you can invert it or keep it normal. For my purposes, I would be keeping it normal, but it took me a little bit to figure out how to do that because I got really confused. It took me forever to figure out that actually I had to make the little redstone connectors either input or output to actually get a signal from them. And I was able to get diesel from my oil processing stuff, so I put some in the generator in preparation for nighttime just to see how much it would use and what would happen exactly. And I also started connecting up pipelines because I had to make one for the steam output and one for the water input which became a giant tangled mess of pipes pretty quickly underneath my floor. Later on that night, the boiler turned on and began using diesel incredibly quickly, so I'd have to make a dedicated pipeline output from my distillation tower to constantly input diesel into it whenever I wanted to run it. And that's exactly what I tried to do the next day, but there were a few things I had to do first, like fill in the pipeline holes in my floor with concrete again, and work a little bit more on the walls of my factory building. I've been doing that a little bit each day so that eventually we'd get there, although I still was very lacking in clay and bricks. I also took some coarse dirt and started filling in the little area that would become my stables in the side of the factory building, and I also filled in the area around the excavator in the front of the building with coarse dirt so it would look a little bit nicer. I now had two pollution clouds going, one from my original factory building and one from the boiler. So that was not a good thing, I'd have to start cleaning that up pretty quickly. I also extended my cobblestone path that was kind of the main street of my little area, and I discovered I had a massive amount of sulfur ore, which I have no use for, so I just yeeted into an empty chest that I had. I also tried without much faith to uh, put some gasoline into the boiler with, with no luck, unfortunately. That would have been so convenient because I already had a massive amount of gasoline. But afterwards, I started making a medium voltage power line that would go over to the pump jack and the distillation tower, basically just piggybacking off my already existing power grid. But unfortunately, the next day, when I was able to try it, it wasn't able to supply the pump jack or the distillation tower enough, so I was forced to take another output from my alternator and add it to the medium voltage power line. And now with two medium voltage outputs from the alternator, I was able to fully power those machines, and we were able to get diesel finally. On day 155, I finally realized that I had broken one of my redstone lines that was connected to the boiler, which is why I hadn't been working properly before. And I was able to fix it, and we had our first successful boiler run later that night, which was both good and bad because I got steam, but it also made a huge amount of pollution, which would create its own new cloud to replace the original one. But for the time being, I decided to ignore that eventuality, and instead I worked a bit more on the factory walls, although I left a space for another three block wide double door because they looked pretty epic. I even added a nice little iron railing around the top of my workstation overlooking the factory building. The next day I dug out a little bit of the hill that was past my buildings because I'd be making a project there eventually and I also needed stone. And I set up another pollution filtering pipe thing so that I could start trying to contain the second cloud that I created because it was very dangerous to go underneath and is quickly making my new factory building toxic. And I also got around to adding my large spruce double doors. I made the actual stable area for my animals on day 157, and I did a bit more on the roof. I started making the andesite sort of like structural beam things in the roof, and I continued working on that the next day amid a huge cloud of pollution which still hadn't been filtered yet, and I had to go get more leaves to add to my new filters because part of the reason it wasn't gone is because I kind of ran out and I didn't notice. <laughs> My next actions that day, while it seemingly insignificant at the time other than just time savers by moving my animals into my new stables, would actually save their lives mere minutes later when something very bad would occur in my area, something I was not expecting or prepared for. You see, I was just mining some andesite underground and I heard thunder, and when I went back there was just a thunderstorm, you know, nothing to worry about, just a little thunderstorm. And it was pretty far away, and then it turned to Category 0 Tornado right in front of me. I couldn't see it yet because it was dark, and it was raining, but it was out there somewhere, and it was heading my way. It was actually moving incredibly quickly, as you can see, and it also turned to a Category 1 right in front of my eyes. I could actually see it at that point, and it turned to a Category 2 mere seconds later, and was still closing on my position incredibly quickly. And this time is clearly visible and rather terrifying looking outside in the night. I checked on my animals and the animals were doing fine down there. 
for now, but I was starting to get pulled away. And when I came back, it was a category four, way stronger than anything that had hit our base previously in the other hundred days or earlier this time. And right in front of my eyes, it turned to a category five tornado, the strongest tornado in the game. One of the downsides of a Category 5 tornado is that it moves incredibly slowly. It started out by moving really fast toward my base, but then it kind of just sat there for like five minutes, and it took forever to go away, and I could see it and hear it for pretty much the entire rest of the day. By the end of the day, it was fully gone, and I was left to build my roof in peace, which was nice. And I also, I got some more slate roof, and I put it in between the girders, and it added a very nice little touch. I made the entertaining discovery the next day that the pollution filtering pipes only work in a square around them, so it created a funny pattern in the sky. I had barely made it into my strip mine with my little pickaxe when I was like, what if I just made the powered mining drill so that I don't have to use a slow pickaxe with a horrible enchantment? So that's what I did. I made a steel drill head and I made the mining drill, which wasn't too expensive. And I went to my engineer's workbench and that's kind of where you modify tools like this. I can put on the drill head and a bunch of different modifications like an expanded fuel tank, an advanced lubricator, which will make it take less damage. And I added some speed upgrades to make it mine at the max speed. And when I took it out, I got another achievement. I tried to fuel it with gasoline and that didn't work so I was like does it need diesel and then I checked and it needs biodiesel which is something different which requires plant oil and ethanol. I have the ability to make plant oil but I didn't have the ability to make ethanol so I had to make an industrial fermenter really fast. The previous day I had made this great and epic mining drill, but I couldn't do anything with it because I couldn't fuel it, so I would have to make biodiesel, which requires ethanol and plant oil, and I can make those two ingredients, but you need a refinery to combine them into something useful, so that's what I set out to make on day 161. It wasn't too expensive, especially because I have endless amounts of iron, and I was able to make it pretty quickly, and I just charged it with a capacitor bank and put in my two ingredients, and we started to get biodiesel. I didn't get a ton of it, but I had enough to fuel my drill for a little bit of time. And then I took it down to my andesite mine to give it a test run, and I've never used this before in modded Minecraft, and it's very, very awesome. It breaks a full 3x3 three three area blocks per use, and since I have the lubrication system, it doesn't drain its durability very fast either. I wanted to go mining now that I had this epic mining drill, but I wanted to be able to get tons of clay and other stuff while I was mining, so I set up a second excavator, which I gathered the materials for the previous night at the silt vein so that I could get endless amounts of clay, sand, and gravel, all of which I would need for building materials. It wasn't too bad this time to make the excavator, but I did have to make a really long line of high voltage power lines from my generator to power it. This just meant I had to make more high voltage coils and it wasn't too bad. I also killed an enderman and got an enderbrill because I was trying to save those up to go to the end at some point. And late that night, I finished hooking up all the power lines so we go to the excavator, and you could see it running in the distance off of what power was stored in the capacitors already in the generator. And the next morning, when the power turned back on, I was able to watch it run. It didn't run 100% smoothly because I was running both excavators at the same time, but it was running plenty fast to serve my purposes. You could even watch the different materials in the different buckets getting scooped up. I had a double chest for all the items to go into, and at that point I was satisfied and I descended back into my mine shaft, this time with my mining drill, and I was looking for diamonds because I wanted full diamond armor. We've been on this world for a while and I still don't have full diamond armor. It didn't take me too long either to find diamonds, and with Fortune 3, I was able to get quite a few of them pretty fast. After about two or three diamond veins, I ended up with exactly 24 diamonds, which was not something I expected, but it meant I could get full diamond armor. In the morning of day 164, I checked my output chest for the second excavator, and we'd already obtained a bunch of sand and gravel and clay, which was very nice, meaning I could make a lot more bricks. And then I used my diamonds to make a full set of diamond armor, which would be very nice, although I wouldn't wear it quite yet because I still have the steel armor, which is already enchanted, and it has some durability left in it. 
In the meantime, I put an armor stand on the second story of my house where I could keep my diamond armor, and I also made a little sword pedestal holder, which looked very nice. And I wanted to actually decorate the second floor because I'd fully decorated the bottom floor, but there was almost nothing on the top floor, so I went back into my deco bench and looked around for stuff that I could use. I ended up finding these cool, like, double canopy bed things and a couple dressers and things, so I ended up doing that. And you can actually sleep in the as well, which is a nice little feature. One of the cool things is that you can put stuff in the wardrobe if you want to. I'm not sure why it's got like a rainbow background, but it is kind of neat if I ever wanted a little bit of extra storage there. And I spent the rest of that evening just building up the walls and some beams and stuff like that. And I experimented with a few different carpets that I got with the chisel because you can like make different patterns that look super nice. And I ended up with some red carpets and some green carpets in the different areas of the second story. I continued doing some decorating the next day and I filled in a window area and I also got some really nice looking decorations from the deco bench like this cool flower box thing and a few flower pots and barrels that I put around the outside of my house and my stables just to make it look cool. Even one of them with apples, I figured that could go by the horses and cows. I took a ton of clay and flung it all into my super smelter from my excavator and I got a ton of glass and started filling in the glass roof for my second factory building and it looked very nice. And I also slept in my canopy bed for the first time. On day 166, I continued filling in the roof of my factory building with my leaded glass pattern. And it was looking really nice, but there were also a billion wires that I had to be careful of. I also got a bunch of bricks at that point from my super smelter. I say it's a super smelter, it's, it's not really super, but it works. And I continued filling in the walls of my factory building. This time with bricks made from clay that I got automatically and I didn't have to mine for. I kept working on my factory building's walls the next morning and I added a nice little window where you can watch the excavator from the inside of the building and it looks really cool from the outside as well, especially with the coarse dirt on the ground. And I also went back into the mines or caves and I gathered some more slate for the roof because I'd ran out of slate, but it was very fast with my mining drill which was very nice. I filled in the last little bits of slate and I stopped one of my windmills because it was kind of in the way, it was kind of funny just to see it stop all of a sudden. And I got a ton of more bricks from my smelting array that had been smelting over time. And so by that evening, I was able to start the big smokestack that would surround the boiler. And my plan for the smokestack was that it would serve a dual purpose. The first purpose being that it would just let the pollution out of the factory building. And the second purpose was that it would actually filter out some of the pollution as it made its way up by having multiple tiered levels of filtering systems throughout the smokestack. And we'd eventually put that to the test, but I still had to build the rest of the structure of it, which is what I did for the next several days. And by the end of day 169, I had finished the top of it, and I was able to admire it from the ground, and it looked really cool. I was pretty happy with the height, but there was still one thing that I could do to make it look better at nighttime. I admired the scenic landscape outside my window the next morning, and then I harvested some crops from the local village, some wheat and stuff that I wasn't automating in my garden closes, and then I installed the first ring of pollution filtering in my smokestack. Basically, it's just a ring of vents that would go all the way around connected to a pump, and I would take one of my diamond filters and place it off of the pump so that all the pollution, or at least all the carbon, would get filtered out because that was the more harmful of the two. But when the boiler turned on, most of the pollution went right past it and up and out of the smokestack, which it means it was venting correctly, but too much of it was escaping. It wasn't filtering very much of it. But at the very least, I was able to make the tower look better at nighttime, like I mentioned, by installing a floodlight to illuminate the tower during the darkness. And it looked really cool, especially from far away. The entire thing was just completely lit up from the floodlight. After my unsuccessful test the previous night, I added a second pollution filtering ring higher up in the tower this time on the next day with my other remaining diamond filter. And I tried to automate the removal of the coal dust and the input of leaves, and I was only successful with the automation of the input of leaves, meaning I still have to go up there to clear out the coal dust every so often. Although, it wasn't going to be that big of a deal because it honestly didn't filter out a ton of the pollution even then, which was really annoying. I did boiler testing and stuff on day 172, and we were starting to get a pollution cloud by that point, which wasn't good, but we were capturing a little bit more of the pollution, which was at least a step in the right direction. I expanded the pollution filtering ring as well, so that there wasn't any like blockages on the inside, and I checked the outside. It looked pretty cool with the expanded rings, and I was able to get enough bricks to finally finish the walls of my second factory building, and then I could also finish the roof once I had that with my glass. It looked very cool in the evening with the floodlight, and I also added some iron bar trim and some lanterns uh, across the front of the factory building, because it was pretty flat before that, but this added a little vinyl touch that I was looking for. And then my boiler stopped working. It, it worked, it produced steam, 
but it was producing steam from water, not the distilled water like it was supposed to. So I spent literally all of day 173 fixing the problem and I was able to finally get it to input distilled water again so that it could actually make enough steam to run the generator because the previous night it could barely run the generator producing steam from just normal water. And I'm not even sure why it started inputting normal water instead of distilled water. Something happened with the pipes, but I was finally able to fix it the next day. And we were still getting lots of pollution coming out of the smokestack. So far, we've been relatively unsuccessful with filtering out most of it, so we are getting a huge cloud. The next day, it was time to start my final large build of the video, which I had hinted at earlier on. And this big build is going to be a large train station, partially for fun and partially for industrial purposes but it required a lot of digging out of area behind the two factory buildings. It's going to be set partially into the cliff and a little bit inspired by King's Cross Station in London. I went back to my build palette that I used for my house and I used a lot of blocks from that and I would spend many many days working on this and I would slowly get the front of it done making the arches for the entryways, the three towers, I added in more cobblestone paths and it very slowly started to take shape but the annoying thing is that there are all these gardens on the hill and each garden drops a ton of food items and they're almost all different and they fill up your inventory instantly. So I was constantly having to run back and forth to my kitchen to dump my inventory of miscellaneous food items from the gardens. But I will say that it would not have been possible to dig out this much of an area without the mining drill. That was the best decision that I ever made in this series was making that mining drill because I had to dig out a lot. On day 178 I started to complete some of the towers. I had mostly completed the middle one, and I was almost done with one of the side ones as well. There was kind of a windmill in the way, but they were looking pretty cool, and I suppose I'd have to move the windmill eventually. And by that evening, I finished the top of the first tower, and I stuck a little lantern so they'd be kind of illuminated and it looked nice, although I still had to put glass in the windows. Day 179, I finished the tops of both towers, but I still had the middle one to do because the middle one was a little bit more complicated, but I started putting in some of the roof behind the front walls. And I made it out of slate because I wanted to do a similar design of, for the roof to my second factory building with it being a half circle roof. And it would extend back into the hill. Part of it would be glass, the part that was exposed to the sky with little andesite beams in between it. And by the end of that day, I got something I was happy with, but I was also out of andesite. So on day 180, I had to go mine andesite with my drill, which was satisfying and pretty fast. I also was looking for quarried stone because I wanted it for the floor of the train station and I spent a lot of the day looking for it and I eventually found it and then my horse managed to suffocate in a wall when I got off of it. Part of the problem is that the horse had only a few hearts at the time. When I found the horse, it had like seven hearts or something and it slowly decreased over time. I don't understand why, I don't understand what caused this and it was very annoying and I was forced to run back on foot after mining quarried stone. I wasn't about to run around everywhere on foot very slowly, so I found a draft horse that I could ride in search of a normal vanilla horse, because the draft horses aren't very fast, and I thought I went back to the place where I'd found the horse originally, but it was actually different than I remembered, and I had to go looking farther for the original place where I found my horse. But when I got back there, I found a couple vanilla horses and one baby horse, and the baby horse had the best stats, and I conveniently had some apples left over from a long time ago in my toolbox, and I was able to make the horse grow up super fast and tame it so that I would have a new super fast horse that I could ride around everywhere. I put it back in my stable when I got home, and I continued working on the roof of my train station.
By the morning of day 191, I had mostly finished the structure of the train station, and I decided to get some nice little props from my deco bench, like benches and some flower pots and other things like that, just to scatter around the train station to make it a little bit more nice looking. I also had a little stall area with some different crates of food and stuff at one end of the station. I completed the structure of this train station, but I didn't have any tracks or anything to put in and to actually make it do something, like have trains and things like that. So I started laying down gravel underneath where the rails would go, and I died a little bit to pollution when running outside because there's still a gigantic pollution cloud. And then I returned to my storage system and had to research how to make rails because it's not simple because we have railcraft which makes stuff more complicated and adds a billion new types of rails for now i'd be sticking just to normal tracks or aka minecart rails and booster rails aka powered rails and i discovered that it would be easiest and most efficient to make rails with steel in my manual rolling machine i also got a bunch of creosote oil bottles because i need that for some ties and I managed to dump Crusoe oil all over my factory building at one point. For every 60 lingots I put in, I'd get 16 standard rails, which was the most efficient way that I could make the rails. And I had to make a bunch of wooden ties, which I would use to make the rail beds. And the next day I continued crafting, and I made my first set of tracks. I find it funny that you put an entire bucket's worth of creosote oil into one bottle, which I managed to dump all over my street. And I had to make some other little miscellaneous track parts to make some booster track kits. And you can basically just craft the booster track kits with normal rails, and it'll give you the booster tracks. And I started laying down my first set of rails inside the train station. I had to do a little bit of uh, planning to figure out how I wanted it to go. And I also had to place in some windows in the towers. I hadn't fully placed in all the windows yet everywhere, which was very difficult when I had nausea. By the end of that day, I was able to fill in the last windows in the main train station so that the next morning I was all set to go out and start making my train tracks because I wanted to have a loop that I could ride around for fun and also have it be a little bit functional. I wanted it to go near the village back in the mountains and also my original farming area and I could make stations and stops there later on. Probably not in this 100 days, but maybe in future videos or episodes. I wanted all the tracks to be on gravel and I'd eventually make the gravel three blocks wide, but for now I only had time to make it one block wide and to follow our path. I also saw a really, really weird horse. It, it, it looked like I had a headache. At least I would have a headache after doing that, but Anyways, I had to go across the river and go through a forest. I didn't want to go up and down constantly because that's a little bit unrealistic. So I ended up digging a few short tunnels through some grass. And on day 195, I went across another river and continued on in the direction of my old base with my railway because I wanted to have a train station stop there so I could get on and off from my old base because it would look cool and be fun. I also checked how difficult it would be to make the tunnel bore from Railcraft, which would aid me in digging out tunnels, and it wasn't too bad, but when I got back to my base to make it, we had a little tornado outside. It never went super close to my base, and I was able to make a tunnel bore, kind of ignored it, and I just watched it go across the field away from me. The tunnel bore works if you give it fuel, rails, ballast, and a drill head. So I gave it all those things in its giant internal inventory, and I set it to just dig a tunnel toward my base because I had already lined up the path and it just had to go in a straight line. This meant that I could work on other parts of my railway while having my tunnel dug out for me. And after a bit, it was on a level with my base and I was able to start placing down rails after I made a bunch more. The next several days, I was just racing to finish the rail. I didn't know if I'd be able to finish it in time, so I was going as fast as I could. Eventually, the tunnel bore made it out of the hill that it had been digging through for a few days, and it came out into the open forest, which looked pretty cool when it came out. I watched it go for a little bit farther, and I eventually stopped it because it wouldn't need to go anymore. And I made a bridge over a river again like for like the third time, and continued my rail back into the direction of my base, because we are working on getting a loop connected up. I dug the tunnel out the other end of that railway area and I was able to connect it up with rails and the gravel path after a little bit more time placing and with that I successfully linked up my railway but I didn't have any powered rails in yet and I had to spend some time running around adding those and making them active. The morning of day 199 there were still a couple powered rails left for me to install but once finished I was able to go back to my base and take off my steel armor and don my full set of diamond armor that had never been used before just been seen on my armor stand. There was one last thing I wanted to do with my railways as well before I finished, which was to add some detector rails before some of the powered rails. And you thought that I wasn't going to do it. You thought I forgot or that I didn't see in the comments, but no. 
I saw the people complaining about my portal being off center and at the very last second of 200 days I fixed it. It is now centered and you can be happy in the comments and not rage anymore. And really late that evening I took a test run on my minecart rail but I'm not going to show all that because I don't want to spoil it. I'll just say that everything went correctly. And after one final sleep in my fancy canopy bed we had reached day 200 right there on the F3 screen. We barely completed that minecart rail it was down to the wire down to the last couple days. But I did it, and we also built a lot of other really cool stuff in this 100 days. And all that's left to do now is to just run around a little bit and admire it, and of course, take a ride on our nice scenic, fancy minecart rail. And there we have it, 200 days survived in the Industrial Revolution. It was getting pretty close there at the end, but I narrowly completed everything I set out to do this 100 days. Like I said in the beginning of this video, 20,000 likes and I'll continue on in this world, but this time you guys have a choice in what I do next. Either I could make 300 days but much later from now because I have other 100 day videos and things I'd like to work on, or I could make more smaller videos more frequently in the world in more of a let's play format instead of the 100 day format. Let me know down in the comments which you'd prefer. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, but that's going to be all for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I've been Steve, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream. Bye.